Elizabeth Larder is on the line with us right now. Uh, she's the woman behind 522. And uh, welcome to the program, Elizabeth. Oh, thanks so much, Randall. Thanks so much for having me this morning. Yeah, no, we're happy to have you here and to help you in any way. It was such a disappointment for us here at Eat Drink Explorer Media when uh, Prop 37 failed. Uh, we, You know... It was in June that we original uh, prior to the election that we had uh, Stacy Malkan on our show uh, to talk about it. And at that point, uh, nine out of ten people polled said they would be interested in having uh, labeling for GMO uh, ingredients on packaging. And then lo and behold, when November rolled around, as predicted, uh, it shifted greatly. Uh, where, you know, as you know, it failed. And uh, much of that based on deceptive advertising, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, and I, I think what really happened is that, you know, the yes side just got terribly outspent, right? So yeah. Campaigns often, as you guys know, and, and witness for yourself with all the advertising, right. comes down to dollars and resources. And it was really unfortunate that the no side, you know, had, what, $46, $47 million on their side. And uh, the S on Prop 37 at six or seven million, so it's just really tough to compete in the expensive California market. Mm-hmm. So, what lessons do you think that you are, have learned and will now do things maybe a little differently than what happened here in California? Yeah, so Washington State, um, you know, we're in full campaign mode. This started um, off a little bit differently than Prop 37 did in California, where we started off as an initiative to our legislature, and then the legislature. Uh, failed to act on it, and now we're in kind of the full campaign. And what we've done is we really tried to get organized very early on and tried to start gathering resources um, and volunteers, you know, back this spring so that we could, you know, hopefully we will have the resources necessary to compete in Washington State on the air. You know, we don't have as many media markets here. We're a little bit smaller in population than California. Right. Um, but uh, we are seeing, you know, people have really come together early, and we have a lot of passionate volunteers and grassroots support throughout our state. And we're hoping that, you know, as time comes on, that with um, spreading the word early and often <laughs> is an effective tool, as well as, you know, raising the money necessary to compete on the air. I think being a smaller market will play in your favor, because uh, you you can tackle that. You can be a part. You can uh, be a larger presence in a smaller market. Whereas when you have, you know, thirty to forty million people here in California, only the really big guns can saturate a market that size. Yeah, you know, in Washington State, we're also lucky, right? Because we're not competing with the presidential race. Right. We're not competing with major races. The only big election. In Washington State, we're, we're the only big um, statewide initiative, and then there's a Seattle mayoral and some Spokane the council races. So we are kind of the big race, and it will be it will be fun to watch. It's going to be competitive, and we know that we are going to be outspent, but we are working diligently to get you know as much resources and volunteers, and, and um, just spreading the word as much as we can now before the fall ad campaign. Let's talk a little bit about the importance of uh, GMO labeling and how your initiative is worded compared to, say, how Prop 37 was worded. Uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the big <laughs> tactics on the no side was to say this will just become a giant legal mess and you don't want your tax dollars going toward mm-hmm. fighting these lawsuits and, you know, a quagmire, a quagmire. That's always that's always mm-hmm. one of the big tactics mm-hmm. they use. Uh, so how so with that in mind, how did you word this initiative uh, so that you could pull that rug out from under the no side? You know, I think we uh, our ballot initiative doesn't have the natural provision that I believe uh, California had. And mm-hmm. we also have a different way that this is enforced and the fines are just it's a little bit different um and it's you know congruent with uh washington state laws but you know really this you know just like in california this is you know, fundamentally about a shopper's right to know it's in the food they're buying and we're also fortunate that california did raise this to a national dialogue and really put this issue on the map and connecticut and maine have already passed labeling laws and though they have not yet gone into effect you know, we would not be the only state to pass a labeling law. So I think that that works in our favor. So what do you want voters, what do they, what's the takeaway here? Because obviously the message 
didn't really wasn't effective maybe i could say here in california didn't work Mm. so what's the message that you want voters to take away now about this labeling well i think you know i think the message is effective you know letting individual shoppers decide if they want to buy foods and having that label so they can make their own personal decision about what's best for them and their family that does resonate with folks and i think the biggest message is you know, for your California audience, if they have friends and family in Washington State who they think should be behind this, tell them about it, right? Like, Facebook them about it, tweet about it, you know, tell them that to get involved, tell them why labeling GE Foods does matter. And, you know, if people want to help volunteer from afar, you can always sign up on our website, yes, on 522.com. Or if people want to help with our grassroots support and donate, we definitely need resources to compete. Um, while we're not as expensive as California, the Seattle media market is pretty expensive, and people can donate on our website, and that's cs dot com. Um, but really, this boils down to just you know people having the information they need to make the best decision for themselves. I know there are some California-based uh, organic and uh, what are considered health food uh, companies that have already donated to the Yes on. Uh, 522 campaign, which I was happy to see. Uh, Concurrently, on the other side, the no side, it's the same list of players, right? You're starting to see big checks roll in from which companies? Yeah, so it's the same. You know, the no side is is doing the same talking points, right? So it's the same folks. It's the Grocery Manufacturers Association has put in almost half a million dollars. Dow Chemical, Monsanto, Genta, Bayer AgroSciences. So it's the same players. The websites even look very similar. The talking points are almost identical. Mm-hmm. You know, and so they just feel like they can, you know, carbon copy what works in California and put in Washington. And, you know, that's why it's been really important for us to get on the ground early and to be reaching out to people at farmers markets. And for your audience, if you guys can contact your friends and family and, you know, acquaintances, whatever, yeah. in Washington State and tell them that, A, this is on the ballot this November, and B, why labeling GE Foods is important, that really helps us get the word out. And that's what we can, we have people power. <laughs> we need to use it. It's true. And I vote with, while my vote didn't, um, sadly, you know, help pass Prop 37, uh, I continually vote with my dollars on a regular basis. Right. And, uh, <laughs> while you're shopping. I do. I no longer do I buy Sabra hummus, which I used <clears throat> to love, mm-hmm. you know, but it is uh, made by Pepsi, I believe. And then... Um, Athenos, uh, which was another hummus I used to buy all the time, is made by Kraft. Both companies gave heavily to the no on 37 side. And so now I make my own hummus at home. And I do that. You know, some people, we're, we air in Santa Cruz, uh, California, mm-hmm. and there are Santa Cruz Organics. Santa Cruz Organics are owned by a larger company that it also did the same thing, donated heavily to the uh, No on 37 campaign. And so while you think, oh, this is... It's organic. It's organic. It says Santa Cruz on it and everything. It's not. (laughs) I mean, it is organic. You have to do some investigation. You have to do investigation to find out which products out there are owned by these larger companies that uh, do not have your best interest in mind, in my opinion. Uh, So uh, I think it is really helpful if the 522 people could get it out there on a regular basis, who is funding this no on 522 side? Would you agree with that, Elizabeth? Yeah, I mean, I think it is important to know. I mean, the Grocery Manufacturers Association put in the most money so far. They've only raised just under a million dollars. You know, the more money's coming, and we know that. Um, But it's been really interesting. I don't know if you guys follow the news in D.C., but Grocery Manufacturers Association had some summit two weeks, like some secret summit meeting about this issue, and no one's really been able to report out what happened at that meeting. Hmm. Um, but, it, I mean, I think it's definitely, you know, being aware of that the no side in Washington State is kind of doing the same thing yeah. in California. Well, I wish you nothing but the best of luck there. Uh, Washington has, voters have been very wise in the past and <laughs> passed some things that I agree strongly with. So uh, I hopefully that same thing will happen again with uh, 522. We really uh, wish you uh, nothing but luck. Elizabeth Larder, and we do have a link at eatdrinkexplore.com. It is uh, 520, yes on 522.com, did you say? 
Yep, that's right. And thank you so much for having us this morning. We really appreciate this opportunity to be able to chat with you. Well, we definitely want to continue to get the word out. Maybe we'll have you on again right before the election. Elizabeth,